time and I'm going to have y'all help me. Let's, Brother Rodney, let's turn the camera around. Let's welcome our viewers out there by Facebook and YouTube. Everybody give them a, a wave offering and tell them you love them and appreciate them. Amen to God. And say we Amen. welcome you. Hallelujah. Amen to God. Look alive. You're on camera. Amen to God. Because it will be put up tomorrow. Amen to God. And just welcome everybody by way of whatever avenue they're watching. And we appreciate you tuning in. Praise God. And we pray something said tonight will be a blessing to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And we pray you won't get offended. Hallelujah. Don't worry your feelings on your shoulders, but put your faith on your shoulders. Amen to God. That Amen. preacher right there, go over to God, man. Honey, write that down. I need to work on that one. Hallelujah. Things that are easy to do. You know, we read in the Scripture, we read of so many different, praise God, so many men and women of God who had great victories. They had great accomplishments in the Lord. God used them. I mean, we could go through and just name men and name things. I think it's just the one that pops off the top of my head, Elijah. Amen. When he went uh, to the mount, it was it Mount Carmel, and they fought the the prophets up there? Yeah. Eight hundred and fifty prophets. It was four hundred and fifty of Baal, and then four hundred local folks around that area that was so called preachers and ministers. But the great victory that that was won that day over the prophets of Baal, over the devil and his gang. Amen. I think about that. I think about Moses and the children of Israel when they were at the Red Sea. And Pharaoh and his army were coming. And, and, and Moses said, Stand still and see the salvation of Amen. the Lord. And he stretched out his rod over the sea and it opened up. And they walked through the Red Sea. Now I don't believe they walked in no muddy places. I believe that was dry. Amen to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think about that. I think about the victory they got there. Amen to God. I think about Joshua and Israel when they was marching around the walls of Jericho for six days and six nights in silence. But on the seventh time around, they rejoiced and shouted, amen to God, and the walls came down, amen oh, to God, and they got amen. to go on in there, amen to God, to possess the land. Yeah. I think about that, praise God. Hallelujah. I think about, hallelujah, Nehemiah. Go over to God, building the walls. Come on. Amen to God, didn't give up. Amen. Kept on, amen to God. Persistent, yeah. amen to God. Trust in God and the great victory there, amen to God. I think about the widow woman. And her kids. Come on. When, when they took care of the man of God, amen to God. They, amen to God. They didn't get starved to death. They didn't die. I just think about those different things, hallelujah. And we read those, hallelujah. And I, and I didn't make it over to the New Testament, praise God. Because if on. I go to the New Testament, I just say Jesus. That's all amen. I need to say about that, amen. Amen. But then I think about there were some failures too recorded in Scripture. Hallelujah. We like to hear about the, the victories, which that's good. It builds our faith up. But we can learn a lot from the failures too. Amen? Amen. And I think about the same one I just mentioned a while ago, Elijah. Right after the great victory on Mount Carmel, Come on. days later, he was wanting to kill himself Come on. and give up because Jezebel and her army was after him. Come on. A man of God who got a victory over 850 prophets of doom was in a cave, I believe it was, yeah. wanting to end his life because the spirit of fear was after him. Come on. That's all it was. It wasn't so much the woman and the army, it was the enemy, the spirit of fear. Amen. Look at the, the, the different time. David, for instance, the one we're talking about right now. Look what he did when the little shepherd boy, probably, I think, what? Probably a young teenager guy yeah. out there. And he went out against this mighty man of a giant named Goliath. And they had all their, their trained, skilled men. But the little shepherd boy who played music. Yeah. And got him five stones. Took that first. Amen. Hit him in and then I love this, Brother Billy. He took Goliath's sword. Oh, yeah. This is powerful right here. You can, you can turn this if you look Come in the on. spirit. That sword is the word of God. Come he on. took Goliath's sword and he chopped his head off. Amen. Hallelujah. Stood over that giant victorious yeah. because of God. Amen. The same man is here caught up in adultery. Yeah. A man after God's own heart. Amen. It was easy to fall into sin when you take your eyes off Jesus. Amen. And I'm telling you, there, there's things. I'm going to show you through this passage of Scripture 
So many different things that it's easy to do. And the first thing I want to do, if you're taking notes, please do, praise God. Because I think this is very, very important for us, amen to God. We need to go back and we need to study this out and pray it and then ask the Lord to give us a revelation of it, amen, because it will help us, amen to God. See, we have an enemy and it's the devil, amen. And we've got to be on guard against the enemy because if you take your guard down, if you give the devil an inch, Tyler, he'll take them out. Come on. Amen. I don't care how super spiritual you are. I don't care. Amen to God. You can shandai, rondai, tie my bow tie. You can do hula hoops and Come on. do monkey flips in the aisle. Thing. That one guy that came here that night, he did a flip over here. Amen to God. You remember Amen. that, Brother Rodney? Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, though, we've got to be on guard against the devil. And we've got to stay prayed up daily. Amen? Come on. The first thing is easy to do is to be lazy in our duties. Amen? Come on. As I said, instead of David going off to war with the soldiers, he stayed behind. He was careless. Made a mistake. See, if he would have been out there leading the army, hallelujah, he wouldn't have been on top of that rooftop watching Bathsheba bathe. Amen. Go over to God. Sometimes, praise God, when you know things you ought to be doing for Jesus. Come on. You need to be doing them for Jesus instead of not, well, I'll just do that later. And you go and you wander off and you get yourself into trouble. Amen to God. And this ain't throwing stones at people, praise God. I'm just telling you. When you get your eyes off them, you start wandering. Yeah. You start doing things you have no business doing. That's why you've got to constantly keep your eyes and your mind focused on Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, that's one of our great problems today is we just become, we neglect the things of God. We just say, we put it off. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it another day. Did you know procrastination is a sin? Come on. It's wrong to put things off. You may not have an opportunity to do something else again. You may not have an opportunity to talk to your neighbor about Jesus. You may not have an opportunity to share the gospel with your co-worker. Amen? Come on. Because, hallelujah, you could end up dying or they could die. Amen. You've got, to, you've got to treat this, amen, to God like it's your last moment. Hallelujah. If we don't fight the world, the flesh and the devil, we become lazy. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Hallelujah. Come on. He goes around. He says, I'm going to try to tear this man down, this woman amen. down. I'm going to use everything I can. See, if we're blood-bought, amen to God, and Jesus owns us, he's, the devil has to go get permission from the Lord, amen to God. And so when the Lord says, hey, Satan, you can do this, praise God, but there's limits, hallelujah. See, God has enough faith in us and trust in us that, praise God, we're not going to just turn our backs on Him, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. Somebody said the whole armor. The whole armor. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So when we get lazy and idle, we become open targets to temptation. Amen. And that's what happened to David. He was relaxing and become lazy and idle. Amen. So praise God. That's the first thing. Don't become, hallelujah, lazy, praise God. It's easy to get lazy if you walk away and not do all the time for Jesus. See, I'll tell you this, and, I, and I'll say this. I was talking to a couple of brothers here a while back, and, and the, the, the subject come up about uh, uh, complacency, and just if, if you don't stay doing what the Lord has called you to do, you tend to drift off. You're like, hallelujah, if you put a bottle in water, it just kind of floats away. After a while, it's gone and gone, and you can't see it no more. And that's the way we are. And I told him, I said, well, I said, you know, when you miss one day of prayer, it's easy to miss two after that. Come on. And it's easy to miss four. Yeah. And when you miss one night of reading the Word, the next time becomes a little bit easier. Yeah. And each time is easier and easier. That's why you've got to stay, you've got to take this flesh and say, listen, you don't control me, I control you. You're going to be submitted under this thing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. So we've got to do that. And that's what happened to David. Amen. David just did not take authority over that in the name of the Lord. Amen. Number two, another thing that's easy to do is lust after the flesh. Go back to verse two for just a minute. Amen. It said, It came to pass in the evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of his house, of the king's house. 
And from the roof he saw the woman washed herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Lust is a natural physical appetite taken to the extreme. Let me say that again. The definition of lust is a natural physical appetite taken to the extreme. See, when we hear the word lust, immediately our minds goes to a sexual perverted thing. Yeah. And it is, but it's not all the time that. You can lust after food. You can lust after uh, jewelry. You can lust after things off clothes and all this stuff. It ain't always got to be after a man or a woman. Amen. Oh, amen. You can lust after the thing. It's basically, it's being, it's coveting stuff. Amen. Yeah. amen. That's basically all it is. It's coveting after stuff. See, our human, amen, desires, we have desires for to be hungry, to be thirsty, the need to rest, the need to relax. Amen. Come on. That's natural desires in us. We crave those things. How many has ever just been tired and you want to go to bed? Amen. How many's tired tonight? Amen. Go over to God. How many's ready for us to go home? Mom, lift your hand. <laughs> Brother Ben, I'll let you give that. <laughs> but that's understandable because our bodies do get tired and we need those things. We need rest. We need food when we're hungry. Or we get weak, amen. Come on. Amen. When we're thirsty, and it's been hot outside the last several days, you need to drink a lot of water, you become dehydrated. And then if you become dehydrated, Isaac, you'll fall out. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think he thought I was getting on him. He kind of looked away. Hallelujah. But however, when these natural needs have gone out of control, then they can lead to lust and sin. Amen? Amen. So the enemy, sin and the flesh, work through our fleshly nature to make us lust after the flesh and the fall into sin. You say, give me some word on that. Okay. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We need to stop that anyway, amen to God, because we're not taking this stuff with us, praise God. I don't care how much you work to get a fancy house, how much you work to get the fancy clothes, hallelujah, you ought to just not worry about them because you ain't taking them with you, amen to God. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in this world, because if any man love the, for, love the world, it said the love of the Father is not in him, amen yeah. to God. Amen. Let me say that again. If any man love this world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, amen. is not of the Father, but is of the world. Somebody say amen on that. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're truly loving Jesus, praise God. Your heart and mind should always be focused on Him 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Amen to God. Your thoughts should be thinking on Jesus. Praise God. When you lay down, when you get up, when you're taking a bath, when you're using the bathroom, when you're going to work, when you're eating your food, it should always be about Jesus. Amen? Come on. Go over and say, Brother Mike, you say you think about him in the bathroom all the time. Praise God. Get some of my best reading done in there. Hallelujah. I ain't ashamed to say it. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can get quiet in there and you can read and study. Praise God. Amen. It's the truth. I know nobody's ever done that before, but me, amen to God, it's all right. It's the truth. Keep your mind focused on Jesus all the time. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. Come on. Turn that camera around. They're laughing. Turn around and show them. They're laughing at me on that, Brother Rodney. Hallelujah. I'll tell you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, and then verse 13. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Amen? Come on. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, listen to this, is life and peace. Come on. Is life and peace. I wish Tanya hadn't left now. I wish you would have heard that, praise God. That would have been peace of